Hi guys, good to see you in September. This is Oleg, your real estate broker with Winery Bellevue Commons. Today going to be my September market update because data are available for months of August and I will cover today in this episode only residential market for all Seattle and all Eastside location. But before we jump into this market update, I want to say big thank you for all those 28 families already use my services to buy or sell home in Chesa. 2021. Thank you so much, guys. I want you to know your interest will be always on top of my mind. And now let's jump in to the market update. I will start with Seattle's east side. And as you guys can see with me on the screen right now, we have 0.3 months of inventory. 0.3 months of inventory is like nine days of inventory. That means uh, if next nine days will be no more listings coming on the market, will be nothing to sell. And we still have thousands of buyers looking to buy in Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, Sammamish, Issaquah, and we simply do not have enough listings on the market. And the minimum sell price is $1,300,000, an increase year over year for 24%. That increase was comparable to same time, exactly same time year ago. And uh, we have 68% uh, of all homes in sales east side selling above asking price and 11% selling at asking price. And as you guys can see with me on the screen, 84% of all homes selling less than 15 days on the market. And with that, odds of selling in Seattle East Side very high, it's 95%, and only 4% of all listings did not close after signing mutual agreement. I'm gonna show you guys the next following slides, very interesting slide. Uh, historically, 10 years data, what's happening first half of the year and second half of the year. And as you guys can see with me on the screen right now, so usually uh, starting in January till July, prices increase for about 7.6%. And from July to January, prices increase only for 1.2%. That's what we see right now. A lot of people asking me questions, oh look, uh, what's happening with the prices? Is like, uh, when's a good time to sell or good time to buy? And um, we still have strong seller's market, but currently we reach plateau with the sell prices and prices going to be increased on the sales east side just a little bit, not as much as they increased in, in May, June, and July. You guys can see with me on the screen, the number of listings sold about list price is about 60 eight percent right now it beats previous years like 2017 18 19 and 20 but it's lower than was in april may and june and july right now we reach in plateau and right now buyers have more opportunities to find a house they can call home and now let's switch to all Seattle data. And uh, as you guys can see with me on the screen right now, so we have 0 0.7 months in inventory. It's different from east side. We have twice more inventory in sales east side. It's 21 days, more affordable in Seattle. So with medium sale price, $875,000 and increase for 6% year over year. 49% of all homes in Seattle selling above asking price and 19% of all homes in Seattle selling at asking price. 73% all homes in Seattle selling less than 15 days on the market. And that makes strong seller's market with odds of selling about 88% and only 7% of all listings in Seattle did not close after signing mutual agreement. And also I wanna show you monthly average based historical data for Seattle, what's happened with the prices. And you guys can see for last 10 years, we have about 11% increase from January to July. And uh, prices went down actually uh, second half of the year uh, for about 3%. So which makes a big opportunity for the buyers in September, October, November, December, and January. So this time it's great for you guys to buy a home. Interestingly enough, number of listings sold above list price in Seattle area is also decreasing from April, May, June, August uh, to right now to 49%. Only beats uh, 2020, 18, and 19, but did not beat 2017. 2017 uh, graph shows we have a much stronger data. 
And also, I want to throw it on the screen for you guys, your favorite slide, what's happened on the market city by city. And you guys can pause this video and uh, watch for yourself. Uh, but you guys can see pretty much majority of all cities prices went up a lot. Like east of Lake Sammamish went up up to 32.7%, West Bellevue 19%, East Bellevue 29%, Kirkland Rose Hill location 31%, Redmond 40%. So Mercer Island 29%, Woodenville 27%. So in many cities, prices went up. Prices pretty much increased, not just in Washington state, prices increased in majority of whole United States for about 14% this current year, which creates huge wealth for people who purchase property, use this ability to buy a home, and now they're living with, with very sweet equity in the properties. I want to cover a couple more questions in this episode. A couple buyers told me they think the prices are not affordable, prices went up so much, salary did not went up as much as the properties went up, and pretty much prices are unaffordable right now. Let's talk about affordability. I want to show you guys a couple more interesting slides. When you guys can see with me right now on the screen from 1990 to 2021, for the last three years, prices went up almost 268%. And you guys can see from first decade from 1990 to 2000, uh, prices went up about 45%. Then from 2000 to 2007, went up about 68%. Then was burst bubble and was recession. And prices went down from 2007 to 2009 about 28 percent went down again from 2009 to 2012 for about six percent and then from 2012 to 2021 raising up 120 percent it's a shocking number through the 30 years prices went up 260 Eight percent, including this recession. And what's happening with the mortgage rate in the same period of time? As you guys can see on the screen with me right now, for the last 30 years, mortgages went down from 10% to about 2.875%. And they become more affordable, like 75% more affordable than was about 30 years ago. And this slide shows exactly what's happening in 2007. So when the mortgages went down and affordability increased to get a mortgage, the home prices went up, which is offset pretty much each other. But it will be very not fair to forget about inflation and not added inflation to the housing market growth. Because inflation reflects on commodity market, but also inflects very much on the housing market as well. You guys can see right now with me, if you count inflation to the prices increase for the last three years, we actually have prices increase for about 83% only for the last 30 years. Why? Because medium national home sale price was 297000 in 2020, and comparable to 1968, the medium sale price was $20,000. But do not forget medium household income in 1968 was only $7,700 a year. And you can buy a dozen of eggs for 57 cents and a gallon of gas costs about 33 cents comparable to four dollars on today's market. So inflation plays a big role in the housing market as well. And this is why we see what's happening in the national data. You guys can see with me price appreciation raising by region. This is like national data. Prices went up not just in Washington state, not just in Belgium, of your Seattle prices actually went up everywhere this year. And if you ask me a good question, Oleg, what's going to be happening with housing market in 2022? I wish I have crystal ball. I have one, but uh, this one, like something like that, but this one actually doesn't work. Uh, but I read a lot of articles and uh, cut my eyes article from August 23, CLPI article, Seattle home prices expected to be rise 18% next year. It's very shocking news. And when I get more deep to it, researches from Perch and last data from Redfin, Zillow, Census Bureau, 
and they put the graph for predictions what's going to be happen next year with home prices in biggest US metros. And Seattle was put on spot number 19. We expected to get prices increased next year for about 18%. Top of the list was Austin, Texas. Prices expected to be increased there about 37%. It's a shocking news. Let's talk about money right now. Just this year, prices increase everywhere approximately 14%. And uh, some cities more, some cities less. But like if next year, for example, sale will increase for about 18%. Basically, if you purchase property last year, so next year you're going to have 32% equity in the property. And if you purchase property a year ago for about $700,000, next year that house is going to be about $1 million. You're going to have $300,000 equity in two years pretty much doing nothing. As you guys can see, real estate is a great investment. And now let me ask you a question. When is a good time to buy a home? And to answer your questions, when the best time to buy a home? It's yesterday. Yesterday is the best time to buy a home. And three years ago was even better time to buy a home. Regardless of any recession, regardless of what's happening in the market, people who bought properties a while ago, three years ago, they're way ahead of everybody else and they live on a great, great equity in the properties. So for you guys who are looking to buy right now, who are looking to buy a house, it's going to be the same game. As soon as you jump into this train, sooner you're going to be start building your equity. And with projection for home prices to be increased next year. If you're going to buy a house right now, you're going to have sweet equity and you're going to be very happy by end of next year. Guys, and before we wrap up this episode, I want to mention about another important player in the housing market. It's number of COVID cases. I want to show you guys statistics what's happening in Washington state right now. And you guys can see with me on the screen. In September 10, we had new cases about 3,400 and seven day average was 3,200 cases. This a little bit scares me because it reminds me about October 2020 when we have perfect storm in real estate market when sellers doesn't want to sell doesn't want to see those people come and choose open houses builders stopped building houses and it was a shortage in construction materials it was a big mess in the housing market in October in November 2020 and with a number of COVID cases we have similar data happening right now hopefully that's not going to be a case hopefully builders will continue and actually expand new constructions and we're not gonna have shortage in constructions materials in the United States as you guys can see we have a lot of different players influence on the housing market and I'd like to repeat again it's only two best time to buy a home first time three years ago and second best time to buy a home it's right now you guys can see my number on the screen reach out to me i would be love to be your real estate resource and i would love to find that house for your family you can call home that's it for today smash like button do not forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and i'll see you guys soon in next market update in october stay safe there be healthy and bye now